Mehaba. So today we're looking at the Kroll Puncher 1. Now this is an interesting gun for several reasons. The first one being that according to internet legend this has been recalled in several countries. So when it went on sale for dirt cheap where I'm living I had to get me a piece of that recalled action. The other thing is if this looks familiar to you then you've probably seen the Air Force Condor, Condor SS or the Gunpower Storm I think. They look almost exactly the same except that this one in order to uh, cock it you first have to lift the bolt. Now this whole cocking mechanism works pretty differently to most guns so going through that quickly there's a hammer spring inside here so when you first cock the gun you're actually pushing up against a spring over here. Now that exposes the breech completely and you can put a pellet rather easily in the front there and then there's a top hat valve at the back and if you press it air comes out so you put your pellet in you slide it back and when you pull the trigger the hammer actually hits this container which pushes up against the, the, the valve and then that just shoots air out. So if we turn over we can see that there's actually an adjustment for this hammer spring. You can actually make it harder just simply by turning this because by turning it you're just making it compress a little bit beforehand. Now where I live um, and the power restrictions if I turn this up I get the same power out of it so all I'm doing is making it more difficult for myself to actually cock the gun so I'll leave it on the lowest. But with the power restriction and the massive tank that means that I can shoot 100 shots and just see this drop slightly on the pressure valve. So that's kind of nice. I can shoot a, a whole day's worth without, without having to worry to fill up in between. Now the other thing that's kind of embarrassing to admit is it took me minutes to actually learn how to switch off the safety. Now it's it's automatic and I thought I was using a reasonable amount of force to actually try to turn it off but you really have to force it. It's a really thorough click. You have to really make sure you want to shoot this now. So the trigger is nicely uh, configurable. You can obviously adjust the blade. You can uh, shove an allen key in there and just adjust it. It's pretty good. As for shooting, I was shooting and it was pretty much going all over the place and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then the one time I opened this to load it and there's a little piece of lead stuck in between. And I thought, did I really mash a pellet in there so hard that I cut the skirt off a little bit? But I thought nothing of it. Took a couple more shots and then I shot one and I couldn't find it on the target and it didn't sound like it went into a target. After some searching I found it's wedged into a door and that's pretty far off. Now I couldn't figure out how that would happen. I mean there's no way that the pellet could actually get chopped off. However after a little bit of investigation putting the pellet in it's actually pretty coned so it's pretty wide and sloppy putting it in and you really have to put it pretty deep like you can't use your, your pad or your finger to get in. So what must have been happening was I put the pellet in, I closed this, then I just lifted it up in my hands to put it down on my bench and that lifting must have rocked the pellet out of the barrel and just into this gap between the two. And then when the air came out it must have just caught it, cut the, the, the skirt off or just deformed it in some way that just went all over the place. So that was not good. But so fortunately the, 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 this comes with the full probe, of course the scope and the allen keys and putting the pellet in you just seat it a little bit deeper with the allen key. So it's a little bit of a longer loading process but it only takes about five millimeters to actually get it wedged in there and I've not had a problem since. Is that why I was recalled? Who knows. Uh, the gun also comes in a lovely massive hard hard case so that's kind of funky too. It's aluminium, it feels really good, it's light despite the size. Uh, to decock it you can just hold this forwards, of course having taken the safety off, pull the trigger and slide it back so it doesn't hit the valve. At the front you can actually unscrew it and it's got a UNF for a moderator and yeah you're gonna need it. So let's see the gun in action now. Alrighty, so as you just saw, the gun is rather loud. Even with the moderator on, it takes it down to a respectable level, but I still got that 
crack. The sound, sound signature is still quite harsh. As for the grouping, well, it's a 14 millimeter group, which is really not bad. This is actually the first gun I've ever had that is actually pellet fussy. I've been pretty lucky up until now. So when I first got it, I was just shooting it with the Meister Kuglin, simply because I have more of them than all the others. And it's a pretty reliable pellet for me. So when I first got this group, I thought, what have I done? You know, I, I bought the dud. This is why it was recalled, apart from the whole self-sabotage thing. So then I went to the, the field target, because it has a fancy name, right? Should be accurate, but sadly not. Then the Jumbo Exact, which is my reliable pellet. I always go back to it when... And, you know, it looks okay. But then I went to these Swiss Arms, and I don't normally buy pellets like this, but, you know, sometimes you want a new flavor. You're like, yeah, I'll try this. So out of desperation, I tried this, and it was really good. And the vertical, verticality, verticality of the, the group I can account for resting on the foam and me just like leaning up and down. So I took these, put the gun on my bag of socks, and yeah, they worked out really well. So once you find the right pellet and you learn actually how to put it in there properly, I'm really impressed, especially considering the, the literal fire sale price I got it for. So yeah, uh, if you can find this cheap, why not? It's incredibly comfortable, it's great to use. And you, after so many shots, the bar has dropped one little slot on the gauge, so it's great. Just keep on going. Alrighty, stay safe, bye.